Hey, earlier on told you, we are discussing, you know, well-being in the workspace. Oftentimes, we work in environments, and you are there maybe to make a coin or two to earn a living. But for you to perform optimally, you have to have, you know, the optimal conditions to help you support do that. And right now, I'm joined by Lena Sumuni, who is the HR General Manager at um, Davis and Shartleaf. Thank you very much for speaking to business today. Uh, when we speak about well-being, especially in the workplace, what exactly are we covering? Well, we are covering a number of things. When we talk about well-being, it's your health. Health is physical, mental, social. Then we are talking about your happiness. Are you happy? Are you happy doing what you do? Are you satisfied? And then we talk about prosperity. A number of us are working because, of course, we want money at the end of the day. So there's prosperity. Mm -hmm. Do you prosper in your vision, your mission, what you want to do, and financially as well? Definitely. Yeah. So we're uh, talking about all that encompassed. Definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and companies, oftentimes, we look at the bottom lines. Yes. Okay, are we, are we making money at the end of the day? Are the shareholders happy? Mm -hmm. uh, now doubling down, like, you know, you take a moment as a company and say, okay, we have to address individual beings and how they're performing. Mm -hmm. How can that be achieved, especially, uh, you know, some companies are, are quite huge. How, how, what structures need to be put in place to achieve this? Well, when you're looking at a wellness programs, so to say, the first thing you need to look at is the type of organization you have, how many staff, uh, what's their age group, what are their needs. Many companies have HR surveys, satisfaction surveys. Have you gotten feedback from those staff to tell you the things that are actually important to them? Because sometimes you might be actually giving a benefit that doesn't make sense to them. For example, preaching retirement to people who are very young in an organization mm -hmm. might not make sense. So you look at your organization, analyze that, then now look at the low-lying things you can do. Mm -hmm. Wellness is about doing small little things over a long period of time, mm -hmm. then they give you the benefits. Mm -hmm. So for example, I can give you one that we looked at. We looked at the organization and many people wanted, some wanted the gym, others wanted different things to make sure they are physically active. So we looked at something that's cost effective. We do Zumba classes. So on Thursdays and Fridays at five o'clock, we get someone to come and take people through Zumba. So it's an empty room with about whatever number of staff. Mm. We have a WhatsApp group now, technology is there. Mm. So they are updated, Zumba is starting in five minutes, they, do their, they change and they come and do their stuff. Oh. So it's cost effective, mm -hmm. it allows them to meet their physical needs and sweat it out. Mm -hmm. So on Thursdays and Fridays. So little things that you can do that have an impact. Uh -huh. Others, for example, when we talk about education, mm -hmm. the policy we've put in place, for example, is we support people who are continuously learning which also plays a big part in well-being of a person. Mm. You being, of course, educated and all that. So what have we done towards it? We give you an education loan that is interest-free. Mm. When you finish, we recognize whatever you bring. If it's a diploma, we compensate you for that. If it's a master's, so we, we are encouraging continuous learning all the time, all yes. the time. Mm -hmm. Then we also, when you finish your education, we, re we reimburse you a certain amount of money for going to school. Wow. So you see, you go back and put it in policy. Because mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're just saying you want to do ed people who are educated, people who are continuously learning, what have you done in policy to be able to support those initiatives you want to do? Mm -hmm. Little, little things. The other thing that I can mention is, for example, we looked at our mothers. Mm -hmm. So they are going for maternity leave for three months and coming back. Towards the last month, they are not as productive as we want them to be. So what do we do? We bring in somebody to slowly take over what they, they've been doing. Mm -hmm. So when they go on maternity, somebody sits in for them. Mm -hmm. When they come back, they are able to get the handover. Oh. So they don't, one, their work doesn't struggle. Two, they are able to find that momentum has grown because we are predominantly a selling company. Mm -hmm. So a number of them will be engineers who are selling. They'll come back, they'll be able to catch on and carry on. Ah, so it's, and that, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you start with the low-lying item you want to do. How do you encompass it in policy? How do you implement it at the most cost-effective uh, way that you can do it? Definitely. And, uh, it's quite impressive because you as a company are doing this. Mm -hmm. Is it a uh, wide widespread phenomena because I, I meant to understand that even in the HR world mm -hmm. there are trends yes and you know well-being might be that one trend mm -hmm. um, what I need to understand now the down effect mm -hmm. because again we are looking at the numbers at the end of the day True. does this reflect yeah. uh, at the bottom line 
Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Because if, for example, you're not looking at um, mental health, which is one of the topical areas you started off with, if you're not, mental health is caused by what? Excessive stress, for example. So if your leaders are creating the stress, stress, HR might create all these good policies, but if you're reporting to leaders who are in turn depress you and you don't feel like turning up to work, there's a problem. Okay. Productivity is low, bottom line is hit. Mm -hmm. So it's important you think about them. So look at the leadership style, what do you need to do? How do you need to grow these people to be able to to, to, to sell these initiatives you're doing as HR. Okay. So the basic thing is to make sure there's a pipeline because if you ignore them, mm -hmm. then your bottom line is hit. Definitely. Yeah, if people are not healthy, if they don't have the information they need about their health, they won't turn up to work. Sick leave, you'll just get a lot of sick leave. You won't Oops. get people turning up to work. Bottom line is hit. Wow. Also, if you've not arranged how things are done properly, ergonomics, if you're in the manufacturing industry, you have workshops happening, ergonomics, how things work. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of that, you get accidents. Accidents, man hour, yes. uh, loss of time. Yes. So it all has an effect, Definitely. a financial at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It has an effect. But I'm really impact. glad that uh, you have taken you know, initiatives as a company mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that everyone is you know,